The Seth Liebson Show, where it's principles, not politics. Now, here's Seth. Yeah, first it's Leanne and then it's Seth. I know it's an argument against uh, things always getting better, but <laughs> go from Leanne to me. Welcome back. Thursday, December 11th, 2014. It's a pleasure to bring back our good friend, Sean Noble. Sean is the president of American Encore and had an op-ed in the Arizona Republic the other day, uh, December 6th, I think it was, uh, that uh, is well worth rereading as we are getting prepared to inaugurate a new governor here in Arizona by the name of Doug Ducey. Uh, Doug Ducey is a blueprint for the GOP. I I, I liked that um, another website picked it up and said it was the conservative victory the nation didn't pay enough attention to. Sean, welcome back. Hey, great to be here, Seth. Uh, Before we get into your op-ed and what we're looking forward to in the new upcoming imminent Ducey administration. Tell us a little bit about American Encore. Well, American Encore is a, is a nonprofit organization committed to the nation's freedoms, uh, free enterprise, free markets. The freedom of speech is a particular one of importance, um, but really wanting to help people understand why freedoms are important, how fragile they are, that they need defending, uh, and that the Founding Fathers were serious about the very concept that the freedom, the freedoms we enjoy are derived from God, uh, not from government. And so trying to help people understand that, to renew kind of that American spirit, um, because we do believe the United States is the greatest nation on earth. We just need to uphold those thoughts and, 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 and help elect leaders that carry that vision, just like Doug Ducey will for Arizona. Nicely put, nicely said. Anyone who doubts anything that you said, and unfortunately what you said is actually, believe it or not, controversial today, folks. <laughs> but anyone who doubts that need only read the Declaration of Independence, the principles upon and the appeal to laws of nature and nature's God from where we uh, decided it was time to become independent. And then look at the preamble, and the rest of, including the absolute bottom of the U.S. Constitution. And then you don't have to argue with Sean or me. You can argue with James Madison and Thomas Jefferson, and uh, that'll probably be a harder thing to do. That having been said, let's look um, to the future here. Um, As you're doing so well, Sean, uh, Doug Ducey is a blueprint for the GOP. I liked your op-ed a lot. I have very high hopes for this administration. Tell us a little more. Well, I think that one of the the points of of putting this out there was as we looked at, you know, it was a great year for Republicans, um, but a lot of the reason that Republicans did very well was because of this this, um, anti-Obama strain, you know, that they were, you know, a lot of people got elected just because they weren't a Democrat. Right. But but Ducey's margin of victory, uh, and we did a, a, a... a post-election poll to try to understand better for Arizona from Arizona voters what it was that was driving them, demonstrated that it was something more than just voting against someone. Yeah. And in fact, when we polled voters, they, the majority of them cited that they were voting for Ducey and his agenda, mm-hmm. not against the Democrat. Uh, and, and I found that very encouraging, because we see so many times people say, oh, people are just so dis- disenchanted, and you know they're just voting against the bad guys. And you know, Ducey actually presented a vision, um, had a broad coalition, and made people hopeful about the future of Arizona, and it really paid off. And and I, I in in the piece I I said when conservatives pine for the next Ronald Reagan, they're not necessarily talking about an individual; they're just talking about leadership. Yeah. They want someone that yeah. that demonstrates the leadership, demonstrates the vision. And I think that you know my point was with Ducey winning among women, he did better among Hispanics than people would have expected uh, in Arizona. And, and I think he's going to grow that, that uh, appeal as he governs. And he did very well among young people, much better than the typical Republican. I think what he demonstrates is for those guys thinking about running for president, all they have to do is look to what Doug Ducey's message was, what his vision was, how, how he led in his campaign, uh, as a blueprint for running their presidential campaign. Yeah, I think that's nicely said, Sean, and I think that's nicely thought through. Uh, we conservatives, or even we Republicans, have, you know, we, we, we say a few things every two and four years. Why, why can't there be another Ronald Reagan? Or, you know, 
the other thing we always say after every election where we don't do too well is that we can't be a party of merely no. And um, the other thing I would add is leave us alone is not a governing philosophy. Right. Right. I mean, you, you know what I'm talking about. Leave us alone is not a governing philosophy. And Ducey promoted one. He promulgated one and he campaigned um, very strong, not not strong, but tirelessly. I mean, he campaigned tirelessly and with cheer the whole time. I've always thought that where's the next Ronald Reagan was unfair, frankly, though, as a standard. It's, it's an impossible standard. No one can be like anyone else. Everyone, right. and, and, and frankly, we don't want anyone to be like anyone else. Uh, what we can say is here's our constellation of great stars. Who can get closest to that? You know, who understands the Lincoln philosophy and can put it the way Reagan did when it comes to the message? And I think you're right. Um, I lived in D.C. up until about, oh, I don't know, four years ago, three and a half years ago. And um, when I told people, friends, colleagues, acquaintances, I was moving to Arizona, you know, they well understood people wanting to leave D.C., but when I said I was moving to Arizona, they looked at me as if I said, you know, El Salvador in 1986 or something. It's hard to understate the image the elites had of Arizona over the past several years outside of Arizona. Some people can say, well, who cares? But I am very much looking forward to this kind of new leadership. And we have got an A team. When you look at the governor, when you look at the new AG, when you go down to secretary of state, down the line, this is going to be a great four years. It's going to be great for Arizona. It's going to be great for entrepreneurship. It's going to be great for events wanting to come back to Arizona and start anew in Arizona. It's going to be great all around. And as you said, yes, Sean, I think even for the minority population, those numbers are going to increase because they're going to see what um, free market principles wedded to a governing, a moral governing philosophy can do for them as well. Absolutely. And, and it really, I mean, you think about it, I, I'm native Arizonan and, and uh, Definitely in my lifetime, and probably uh, in the in Arizona history, I don't think we've had a stronger uh, constitutional set of officers, you know, governor on down. Uh, That's right. At, at any one time, yeah. And and it, it is a it's a dynamo team of young and up and coming leaders that every one of the every one of our statewide electeds, um, in in and of their own right will have a national presence because of the leadership that they bring to bear in the office that they hold. Uh, there's no question in my mind about that. One of the things that I found so interesting, and I'm glad you brought out in your op-ed, Sean, we're talking to Sean Noble, folks, by the way, the um, the founder and head of uh, American Encore. One of the things I've, I found so interesting is um, what you and, I guess, Kellyanne uh, Conway found with regard to education as, a, as such a high priority for voters. Mm -hmm something like 35 or so percent, usually doesn't get that high a rating and usually doesn't inure to the Republican candidate. I think people have gotten so fed up with what has gone on in our education system, the same old, same old, same old, frankly, for the last, I don't know, 30 years um, between Republicans and Democrats. Ducey really does have a different view. He, and, it, and it really it really stood out. That was, was so yeah. shocking. I mean, I remember Kellyanne calling me uh, after she came out of the field. She said, well, you're going to be interested in this. Education tops everything, and Ducey wins with that. <laughs> you know, he, he was, you know, that actually helped him as much as Duval campaigned against Ducey as being the guy who's yeah. going to cut education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Care about education, and Duval was like, well, not one more cent. That's you know, right. That's, he that that didn't resonate in comparison to what Ducey was talking about, which was we're going to provide opportunities to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, he talked a lot about. Quote, you know, funding the waiting list, which means those kids who are in failing schools, who are on a waiting list trying to get into an excelling school, we're going to find ways to actually get them there. They don't have to rely on a lottery system anymore. We're just going to figure out ways to get these kids who want to get into successful schools and, their, and help you know, the parents who want to get their kids into successful schools do that. And, and that really resonated with people. And to the point where that's, I, I think that was the issue, in fact, that, that helped the Ducey win among women as a Republican candidate. One of the interesting things, too, about your op-ed, Sean, is if you take it in its totality, as you run down the various issues voters cared about and the various flops that the Democrat, uh, Fred Duvall, uh, engaged in, some um, were serious flops and some were just tired Democratic rhetoric, frankly, 
It, what's interesting is it didn't work anymore. I mean, their playbook really, when you look, put it in the perspective you do, you look at each of the items you talk about in your op-ed, that Democratic playbook is gone. And d- the Ducey Republican playbook actually could be a template for the nation. No question about it. And, and it's not gone just in Arizona. The Democrat playbook of the war on women fell flat in Colorado, yep. where it should have gone gangbusters. Yep, but Cory Gardner won that Senate seat in, yep. with a huge margin. It, it fell in, in Iowa. Uh, you know, it actually— Illinois, Maryland, my gosh, right? Yes, And and in Virginia, which was not supposed to be close at all, uh, Ed Gillespie came within, you know, 10,000, 15,000 votes in a race that was supposed to be a blowout by Warner. Uh, And so so you're right, it, it— it's a tired, tired playbook that's not going to work, and uh, and I that's you know, what we saw with, with Ducey and other Republican candidates who had vision. That's the playbook going forward. Yeah, it sure is, and 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 it's a message to Repu- not just to Democrats but to Republicans too. To be a Ducey Republican may someday be, maybe someday soon, be a phrase, because I say, as you point out, it's this positive, forward-looking mission that line he had about building a business. And now shrinking a government. Um, look, we know from a lot of past elections and experiences that being a good businessman isn't enough to be a good politician, or frankly, to be a good governor or 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 or, or president or senator. There are plenty of fine businessmen who fail in politics and in and, and in government. But this was a man who had everything thrown at him, and at the end of the day, kept the smile and kept the record in front of the voters, and that paid off. He didn't shrink from it at all, not one bit. Yeah, it shows his courage and yeah. his, his stamina and his willingness to to stay on his principles. Uh, he is, you know, a happy warrior. He is moving the cause. And it's also good to see who someone's mentor is. I have said the worst thing that's happened to Washington D.C. in my lifetime probably is the absence of John Kyle as a U.S. senator. To read that Ducey's mentor is John Kyle maybe tells you everything you need to know. It, it's it's you know it's part of why Ducey is doing so well because he's surrounding himself by very good people. Sean Noble, you're a good person. Thanks for being with us. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. We'll talk soon. Okay. Take care. Okay. Take care.